Hi, my name is Paul. Uh, call sign Buckwheat. They call me Buckwheat uh, ever since I was a little kid. Uh, this is a review of my Mauser 98. Some buddies of mine asked me to uh, to post something up. So this is a uh, Mauser 98 that I chambered in Springfield 30 out 6 and it is known as Das Hammer because he, he it is the hammer. Uh, so we'll start off with, uh, I gunsmith this myself. The receiver and the bolt come separately. You, you uh, marry them together so I lap the bolts for an 80% plus engagement on my, on my lugs into my um, lug rings on the barrel. Barrel is a shilling barrel, uh, 8 groove, 1 in 12 twist. I specifically selected this barrel uh, for the 180-grain Nosler Acubon bullet in mind when I built this rifle. Uh, so I cut the chamber in uh, Springfield 30-06. The action is a Charles Daly by Zeistava. Uh, Contour 3. Uh, very nice barrel, uh, standard barrels, right around 22 inches long. I left my barrel 26 inches long, gives me approximately another 200 feet per second, which, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, my 150 grain uh, silver tip partitions, or, or ballistic silver tips, I tip the scales right around 3,100 feet per second. Um, so the difference between the Mauser and breech and the Springfield breech in the chamber is, is uh, the breech. Uh, cone breech for the Springfield, flat breech for the miles are opted for the Springfield breech. Cone is a, a better feed for, in my opinion. Uh, nothing crazy on the crown for the barrel, just kind of left that the way it is. Optic system is a Zeiss Z-Plex 800, 4.5 to 14 by 44 Conquest. You'll notice that it's completely painted. Uh, one thing that always kind of bothered me is people who get their rifles and they paint them and then they leave that black band around here. Well, you can't really see it from here, but my friend, uh, Scott, who's a master jeweler, actually took a 2,000-bit burr bit and uh, engraved everything that you normally would see on your scope that is printed on there, all the, the white is now permanently engraved into the metal, just deep in, just slightly into the surface. So I can paint the scope many times over and never lose my, my uh, reticle references, magnification, everything's on there, serial number, everything. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, tally. Tally rings and bases. Tally makes their uh, bases built into their rings. So I, I basically eliminated uh, six screws by switching over to this system, which is 30% less screws, 30% less shit can go wrong in the field, things loosening up and such. Very nice. I'm very happy with these rings. Uh, a couple other options or a couple other features I have on the other side here. I'll show you when we get there. Uh, moving on to the front end here, the uh, GG and G XD2 bipod. Uh, very solid bipod. In this position, it's in the 30 degree shooting position. And it can also go up to a 45 degree shooting position. Um, can't say enough great things about the bipod. I've dragged it through the Rocky Mountains all the way from slate stone, cactuses, Rocky Mountain sage, everything. And uh, it's taken everything I've ever dished out to it. And it, it, it just doesn't seem to give a shit what I do to it. Uh, very solid. A standard rail, sling, you got it. Um, so, the grip here is uh, Acker Glass. I, uh, backing up for a second, I did fully bed the rifle in Acker Glass, and I can't stress the bedding enough in, that, in the world of accuracy. Bed it from the tang, and then up to, uh, about an inch, inch and a quarter up to the chamber. Uh, full bed job there, and then on, on the bottom, you can comfortably take your weapon system apart, put it back together, and it'll pretty much shoot pretty close to where it did before. So if you ever get in a jam and you actually have to take it apart in the field, you can still put it back together and be confident that you could take a, a respectable high percentage shot. No, I probably wouldn't take a long range shot unless I re-zero to make sure everything was cool, but if a big muley busts me at 150 yards, I'm going to light his ass up like the 4th of July, and uh, he's not going to make it out of there. So I bedded it fully there, and I had some extra glass left over, and I decided that I, I, this was a point of concern to me for strength. The shock wave is going to come this way. It shoot through here, and, uh, and this, was, this is a weak point to me, so what I did was I drilled three holes in the bottom and I in installed three stainless steel recessed uh, screws that I dipped in Acker glass prior to screwing them in. So I have three stainless steel pins in here, and then I used Acker glass around this grip, and what I did was I just took a popsicle stick and, and, and dimpled this and kept doing that. I uh, started to build it up, and then I put a latex glove on, 
used a Kiwi Neutral shoe polish, uh, lubed that thing up pretty good, and then I, I molded it to my hand. So I would mold and remove, and then take a popsicle stick and dab, and then mold and remove. And I did that for however long it took for me to get this to where it is. I don't pay attention. I just kind of disconnect and go into my own world. So I made it, made it a, lot, a lot stronger. Uh, the trigger system is a Timony uh, Featherweight Deluxe tunable trigger. All my triggers are set to 3.25 pounds. Uh, all my rifles, my ARs, everything has the same trigger system by Timony and they're all set to the same. So when I transition from weapon to weapon, muscle memory for my trigger is, is all built into the system. Uh, pretty, pretty good. Uh, moving on toward the back side here, uh, I like to use these, these cheek rests that you get, on, uh, get online. I like the side pouch on them and stuff and I also uh, it's nice to have that. You want to insulate your body from as much of the gun as you can because your heartbeat at high magnification will make your crosshairs bounce and all that jazz. So this is just a simple uh, cheek rest. Had a little Russian lady sew a piece of leather on there and instead of being it black, I wanted it tan. So a little piece of leather cost me like 20 bucks to do that on there. No big deal. All right, moving on to the back side here. Uh, adjustable cheek rest here, which is nice. If I ever change optic systems or rings, I can uh, readjust my cheek quite easily. Uh, kick ease, uh, kick reduce uh, recoil pad, pretty decent setup. I also installed a uh, monopod into the into the system because when uh, evaluating targets at long range, I like to stay on target for a long period of time and you don't want to fatigue yourself by by uh, holding that weapon on target. I can set this up on target and pretty much leave it alone and do all my uh, windage and, and all my calculations. However far you go with that is, is, is what you do. Um, so, the monopod was uh, actually off of an M4 recoil pad that had a built-in monopod. I just bought it on eBay, cut it out of there, drilled a hole, installed it. Uh, Alright, I'm going to flip this guy around so we can take a couple looks on the other side here. Always going to hit something. Um, the release for the, the release for the monopod is here. You just simply push it and it'll drop it down or up and elevate. Also, I installed a um, nice lean angle on the XD, huh? Uh, this is a Weaver level system, so when I, on my horizontal axis, when I'm trying, to, when I'm squaring up to my target, I want to obviously make my, my horizontal plane level, so I'll, this, this tells me when I'm level, and any, if I'm shooting downhill, uphill, or whatever, I can, I can level my system up. As well as if I was shooting on the bench and I really wanted to shoot a true true level, I would be able to level on my horizontal, go back here, level my vertical axis, and be shooting on a completely level plane, and then uh, go ahead and see what my how my bullets are, are performing. Nice little uh, nice little thing from Weaver, like 50 bucks. Also installed a couple of fiber optics up here uh, with the rear that calibrates my scope on a quick quick fly. All I do is center up the, the red in the middle of the two green dots. That calibrates my scope uh, to my reticle to my load. Um, different configurations. It's a kind of a fine-tuned kind of thing. Um, also, I guess, what we got left here is the paint job. It's a Cryptek style paint job. It was my first one I, I uh, attempted. It turned out okay, I think. I uh, really enjoy the gun. Uh, lastly, I guess we, we quick covered uh, everything except for the Scope cap here. Uh, on the rear scope, I always like to have something to cut that light a little bit from that cross uh, parallax reflection. It's the wash light that comes between your eye and your and your scope. Uh, by doing this, it'll uh, make your image a little bit darker, a little bit crisper by removing that light between there. Same with the front with the shade. The shade actually is what is removing the light that's crossing right in front of your scope right here, which is going to wash your image out, and make it too bright. So the shade will actually make your image a lot more um, much more bright in a high contrast way, not a washed out way. Um, and then uh, I think that's it in a nutshell here. Pretty much covered everything on the optics and the scope and the, the, the stock, which I got from a thing in Czechoslovakia, a, a pretty decent guy. Um, also ghosted in these, uh, these uh, tiger teeth. Uh, I've always been a fan of the A-10 Warthog. Uh, as a hunter it is on the field it's kind of a tribute to that to that airplane because when the big fangs are out uh, big game hunting's on uh, I really enjoy going out there uh, this little ammo pouch here I usually carry a little uh, thank you very much from uh,
for myself to uh, when I when I shoot one of these four-legged sons of bitches, I like to uh, take a death card and write the number of the kill, whether or however many I've killed that season so far. I'll put it in its mouth and take a photo for my collection, and then I leave this on the gut pile to let all the other uh, let all the other animals know that death is here. So this is my Mauser 98. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, time and effort went into it, and I, I think it turned out pretty decent. If, if you got any negative comments or if I made some sort of weird mistake, I don't care. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.